On the 12th of July 2013, it was announced that The Ultimate Warrior would be returning to the WWE in the form of a pre-order bonus character in the WWE 2K14 video game. This came as a surprise to many, it's not like the WWE and The Ultimate Warrior had been on the best of terms over the years, but keep in mind it was 2K who brokered the deal, not the WWE. Of course, this would lead to doors getting reopened and the possibility of bridges being rebuilt. The Warrior and the WWE could maybe come to some sort of agreement that would allow Jim Helwig to once again appear on WWE TV shows. And this is exactly what happened. Although no one could have imagined how short lived his time back would actually be. Jim Helwig once again made headlines during his brief return to the WWE, but the headlines that he made were devastating. One day after returning to WWE Raw after an 18 year absence, Jim Helwig passed away. The news totally shook the wrestling world. No one could have seen it coming. The triumphant, long-awaited return of the Ultimate Warrior after all the trials and tribulations, and it was all gone before it truly got started. After the deal was made to include the Warrior in the WWE 2K video game, Jim Helwig once again put on the face paint and filmed a trailer for the game. It was excellent, fans of the Warrior went nuts seeing Jim paint his face one more time and walk through the 2K studios while talking about the destiny of the Ultimate Warrior. The commercial was filmed around 5 years after the Warrior's last match and Jim himself said it was odd putting the face paint on once again. When asked if it was fun getting back into character for the commercial, Warrior said, I wouldn't say it's not fun, but it's very different and very interesting to me. When I was on the road it was something I used to do every day, but I'm not the same person and I'm not that guy anymore. For me to paint my face, it makes me think of things that I don't think about all the time. When I was on the road and putting the paint on my face, I became a character and that character operated in a completely different way. Some of the qualities of the character came over into my everyday life. I think this is an interesting statement from the Ultimate Warrior and this brings us, very briefly, to what the Warrior was up to after his WCW run had ended. I only bring this up because every other Warrior video on this channel has had comments regarding this time period and it isn't something I want to linger on but still it should be addressed. Warrior became a conservative speaker who would travel to schools and universities to pretty much denounce opposing political policies and also denounce people's life choices in terms of sexuality and preferences. Where does he come from and he's, is he less human than you? Is that what you mean? Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're saying? Again, these videos focus on wrestlers' careers and not their personal choices, but the Warrior decided to be very outspoken regarding his beliefs and it caused a ton of backlash from those who didn't maybe agree with him. There's lots of information about this online. Warrior also done a ton of vlogs and interviews talking about not only politics but his history and wrestling. If you want to learn more, the information is easily accessed via Google search. Though that statement made by Warrior about some of the character's qualities getting brought over into his personal life, it made me think of the eccentrics of the Warrior, the intensity and the complete balls to the wall attitude with no remorse, no cares, the one nation under the Warrior and during his public speaking you could easily say that the Warrior spoke with no cares and no remorse too. Anyway, again these videos are about wrestling and careers in wrestling, but I know this topic will be mentioned numerous times in the comments. I've mentioned it, we're all aware of it, so let's move on. Just to highlight how bad things had gotten in regards to the relationship between the Warrior and the WWE, we should also briefly mention the self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior 2005 documentary, a presentation that went straight to DVD and was produced by the WWE. As far as I'm aware, the DVD is now out of print, but if you look hard enough you'll be able to find it. Basically, the self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior was a burial put on disc. Loads of superstars, past and present, and even Vince McMahon himself, 
had interviews on the DVD where they ripped Warrior apart. From his lack of care in the ring to his insane promos, nothing was off limits here. The WWE and its staff bashed the Warrior throughout the whole presentation, deciding this would sell better than an Ultimate Warrior match compilation. Warrior decided to file a lawsuit against the WWE in regards to the documentary. Though to give a little clarity, back in 2000, Warrior in the WWE went to court over the rights of the Ultimate Warrior name, likeness and trademarks. An agreement was reached then that the WWE would own any existing Warrior footage and they would be allowed to re-air said footage at any time, but the Ultimate Warrior character would belong to Jim Helwig, along with the trademarks and likeness for newly created media. The 2000 agreement also noted that both parties agreed not to disparage each other and that the WWE also agreed to pay $890,000 to Warriors Ultimate Creations as part of the settlement agreement. So at first glance you would believe Warrior had a great case here, after all the WWE just created a new piece of media using the Warriors name and it appears that the WWE are indeed in violation of this court agreement. However, when Warrior took the case to court, it was thrown out thanks to Warrior himself making disparaging comments against the WWE during his public appearances and public speeches. Because Warrior himself had dragged the WWE's name at any given chance, the courts decided that the WWE's retaliation was in fair play and so the Warrior did not recover any damages from the self-destruction DVD and the charges were dropped. When Warrior was asked if he would accept a WWE Hall of Fame induction, he mentioned the self-destruction DVD when he said, They need to tell the right story. They need to tell the right story for the fans. It's been interesting. Years ago they started rewriting the history of the character and then they came out with the DVD, talking about the self-destruction DVD. I see the people who love the Ultimate Warrior. They're grown up now. They're out in the world and they've got their own kids. I've seen them and they fight. They don't sit back and take it anymore when people are on a bandwagon and spew out all kinds of stuff that's not based on any factual information. So they need to tell the right story and that would be a way to open the door to talking about the Hall of Fame. WWE 2K14 was released in October of 2013 and fans were able to pit the Ultimate Warrior against modern wrestlers and also legends of the past. Then, on the January 13th, 2014 edition of WWE Raw, an announcement was made during the show. The Ultimate Warrior would be coming back to the WWE to receive his long overdue Hall of Fame induction. In regards to the WWE making things right regarding the self-destruction DVD, it was also announced that a new 3 disc DVD set would get released featuring Warrior's greatest matches along with a new exclusive interview with the man himself. So it seemed the bridges were indeed being rebuilt and the Warrior was going to come home to the WWE. It should also be noted that Ultimate Warrior was approached about going into the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania 26 in Phoenix but he declined due to still feeling bitter in regards to the self-destruction DVD. In 2014, both Vince McMahon and The Warrior felt like times had changed. The Warrior himself said his outlook on life had altered after watching his daughters grow up and it was time for him to come back for his fans. Warrior never forgot about the DVD though, he even spoke about it to WWE cameras on his way to Stamford in 2014. Triple H spearheaded the negotiations when it came to bringing Warrior back for his Hall of Fame induction, which is interesting when you think about how Warrior squashed Hunter in their WrestleMania 12 bout, but still, as the theme has been up until now, times had changed. Warrior showed up for the Hall of Fame rehearsals and he met with Vince for the first time in years. The two embraced and expressed how good it was to see each other after all this time. Vince later said, I saw the person that I've known and loved for so many years. He kept shedding all this angst he had, you could almost see it minute by minute, and it was a wonderful thing to see. Warrior put Vince's mind at ease when he said he was there to have fun and he wasn't going to make any disparaging comments. Warrior wanted Linda McMahon to induct him, which many people were surprised by. 
Warrior and Linda had a personal connection. Jim would visit the McMahon household and make himself at home, and Linda would look after Jim and listen to him when he was feeling down and alone. Warrior didn't want a superstar inducting him, he didn't want the chairman inducting him, he wanted Linda McMahon, one of the only people who would really listen to him during his turbulent years. The Little Engine That Could is an American fairy tale that was published in 1930. The story is about a long train that must be pulled over a high mountain, but its engine breaks down. After all the larger engines make excuses not to pull the train, a small engine agrees to try. The Little Engine succeeds in pulling the train over the mountain while repeating its motto, I think I can. The moral of the story is to teach the value of optimism and hard work. The story was also Vince McMahon's favourite story as a child. Vince McMahon said himself that he always felt the WWE was the little engine that could, in the sense that the WWF as a territory started small but overcame giant mountains to become the worldwide leader in sports entertainment, take from that what you will. Vince McMahon also felt that the warrior was the little engine that could, in regards to the warrior never accepting no for an answer and never giving up. He even told the warrior as much. Vince told warrior that he was the little engine that could. On the day of the Hall of Fame, warrior brought the little engine that could book to Vince, showing that Jim had remembered Vince telling him the story. Inside the pages, warrior wrote a message for Vince. Vince, thanks for the opportunity to go from I think I can to I know I can. Always believe, Warrior. Vince McMahon later said, When Jim gave me that book, I looked at it with a puzzled look. I looked up at him and I knew it meant something and I tried to place it. He told me, you don't remember this, but it was something you told me many years ago. To know that someone took to heart those words, who wanted to give back and let you know that he was listening all along, you don't know what you have until you don't have it. With his daughters by his side and a huge smile on his face, the warrior walked out to accept his Hall of Fame induction. Warrior said that the most awesome thing he will ever do was be a father to his children. Warrior said that he was now a legend and he will continue to run through the hearts and minds of fans for generations to come. Warrior said he was proud of his career and he was proud to get inducted into the Hall of Fame as the crowd chanted, Thank you, Warrior. So the next night at WrestleMania, and it's customary for the Hall of Fame inductees to come out on stage and receive a round of applause from the WWE fans in attendance. Before this happened, Warrior ran into Hulk Hogan backstage, and the two made peace with each other. The two men had been ripping each other apart in interviews at any given opportunity, and Triple H had specifically asked Hogan, as a personal favour, to not speak to the Warrior until the Hall of Fame was over, and also after WrestleMania. Triple H said that Warrior was in a good place, he was having fun, and he didn't want anything to ruin the weekend. Hogan bumped into Warrior by the off chance, and the cameras caught it. Hogan apologised to Warrior and said someday he hopes the two can start over. Warrior said he appreciated Hogan speaking to him, and he accepted Hogan's apology. Warrior admitted to Hogan he had made mistakes too, and so these two legends of people's childhoods were able to put the past behind them, and if things had turned out differently for Warrior, who knows where this could have led to. Anyway, Warrior came out at WrestleMania 30 to a thunderous ovation as the fans paid respect to the 2014 Hall of Fame inductees. The following night on Raw, Warrior was given the opportunity to come to the ring one more time while the music played, and he had the chance to address the fans. Warrior's promo, in hindsight, seems so foreshadowing. Of course, nobody could have predicted what would happen next, but when you go back and watch this promo, it's almost as if Warrior knew what was going to happen. In a way, you have to think of Warrior's previous promos, what people would say about Warrior's previous promos and how he made little sense, but on this night, it seemed like he made way too much sense. Warrior said, 
Every man's heart one day beats its final beat, his lungs breathe their final breath. If what a man did in his life makes the blood pulse through the body of others and makes them believe in something deeper and larger than life, then his essence and spirit would be immortalised by the storytellers, by the loyalty, by the memory of those who honour him and make the running the man did live forever. I am Ultimate Warrior, you are the Ultimate Warrior fans, and the spirit of the Ultimate Warrior will run forever. On April 8th, 2014, one day after Warrior's appearance on WWE Raw, it was announced that Warrior had passed away. People backstage during WrestleMania weekend noted that Warrior was sweating profusely and breathing heavily backstage. He seemed quite frail at times also, it was reported. It was later revealed that Warrior passed away due to a heart attack and he was only 54 years old. Although the relationship between the WWE and the Warrior had been strained over the years, the fact that both sides got some closure in the very final days of Warrior's life is kind of poetic in a way. It sounds cheesy and it sounds corny, but the timing of it all made it seem like Warrior's last task was to come back to the WWE, kind of making amends to his legacy and allowing his name to be remembered as legendary instead of tarnished. The WWE created the yearly Warrior Award which is given out at WrestleMania. The award itself is given to those who live their life with courage, strength and perseverance. The award is bestowed on members of the public along with backstage employees of the WWE who don't get recognition for the difference that they make. And so with this Warrior Award, the Ultimate Warrior's legacy continues to live year after year.